Hello everyone, this is Stephen Baltz, your instructor for Computer Applications Online at Ozarka College. Uh, in this part four video for PowerPoint Module 2, I'm going to take you through the remaining pages uh, in the module, starting on page PPT 2-36. Alright, I'm going to work through the rest of the module with you. Um, basically at this point, um, through uh, part three, the part three video that I did last, um, we worked uh, through page uh, 2-36 in the book, and we uh, created uh, the, or inserted the shapes on slide five, and we added the text to the slides and did a little bit of formatting to the shapes. Um, in this uh, video, what I'm going to do is take you through the steps to uh, position the shapes on slide 5 where they should be uh, to make sure that they look good on the slide and they're positioned correctly. Um, we're going to learn how to use the drawing guides and the ruler and the grid lines uh, to do that and then we'll also add some other shapes and format those as well on the bottom of the slide and then we'll add a shape on slide 1 and format that uh, according to the book specifications and then uh, towards the end of the module we will learn how to add a footer to our slides and how to add a slide transition effect alright so let's get started here um, so on pages 2-36 and 2-37 it talks about uh, how you can position the slide elements specifically the shapes uh, and pictures on your slides. And we're specifically going to learn how to use the ruler, the grid lines, and the guides, uh, the smart guides, uh, to uh, align our shapes on slide 5. Alright, so um, if you haven't already read through that information there on those uh, two pages, go ahead and do that. On page 2-38, uh, it says, with slide 5 displaying, we want to display the view tab. All right. And you'll notice on the view tab that there is a show group here that has three checkboxes. One is for the ruler, one's for the grid lines, and one's for the guides. All right. And basically what it wants us to do is first, it wants us to click on the guides checkbox which is this last one here to uh, check that box so that the guides show and then on page 2-39 it also wants us to click the ruler checkbox so that the ruler displays and you'll notice <clears throat> right away that when you as soon as you click the ruler checkbox you'll notice the horizontal ruler at the top of the uh, slide uh, window uh, appears and also there's a vertical uh, ruler on the left edge all right and then we also want to display the grid line so towards the bottom of page 2-39 it wants us to click on the grid lines checkbox as well so that we see the uh, grid lines you'll notice these horizontal and vertical grid lines on the slide and all of these elements are all of these uh, tools are going to allow us to align our shapes on this slide very accurately okay all right so once we've done all that on page 2-40 it wants us to position the pointer on the horizontal guide in a blank area of the slide so as the pointer changes to a two-headed arrow all right, so the horizontal guide uh, right now is positioned right here at the zero uh, vertical mark, okay? And so what we need to do is we need to drag that down so that it's three inches below the center, all right? And so you'll have to kind of look on your ruler here um, and... Uh, You'll also, there'll be a little screen tip that displays as you're dragging. So we're going to point to that horizontal smart guide, drag it down until 3.0 displays, 3.00 displays as the uh, 
as the inch mark uh, below center. Okay, so we're going to drag that down. Okay, so it's right here on the three inch mark. All right, then we're going to position the pointer on the vertical guide, which is right here at the zero inch mark, kind of in the center of the slide. Um, and we're going to position it by dragging it uh, to five inches left of center. So we're going to drag it to the left until it's positioned five inches left of center. Again, use the ruler as a guide and also use the, uh, the grid lines as a guide. Okay, so we've got basically the intersection of those two guides that we moved is right here. Okay, right down here at the bottom. All right, and then what it wants us to do, the reason that we move those guides is so that now we have a place uh, where those two guides intersect is where we're going to position, you. we're going to use that to position this left trapezoid shape. So now um, the last step there on page 2-40, uh, the last bulleted item under step 2 says, drag the left trapezoid shape so its left lower left corner touches the intersection of the vertical and horizontal guides that we just moved. Alright, so we're going to drag this left trapezoid shape and basically position it so the lower left corner touches the intersection of those two guides. All right, so we've got that position. You can, you can kind of look at the picture in your book to make sure you got it positioned correctly. And again, use the ruler and use the guides uh, to make sure that you get it in position. Use the grid lines as well. All right, page 2-41. It wants us to position the remaining shape, so we're going to drag the vertical guide to two inches left of center. All right, so right now it's over here. So we want to move it to two inches left of center, which would be right there. Okay, and then it wants us to select the oval shape and position it so that its lower left corner touches the intersection of the vertical and horizontal guides. All right, so now we've got the vertical guide here, the horizontal guide still where we left it down here. And so that's what we're going to kind of use uh, to kind of position this oval shape. All right, so kind of the bottom left hand corner of the selection rectangle around the oval shape should be aligned right at the intersection of those two guides. All right. Once you get that in place, then we're going to select the right trapezoid shape and position it so it's lower left. Actually, we're going to have to drag the vertical smart guide first. Drag the vertical smart guide to two inches right of center. So right now it's over here. We're going to drag it to the right until it's two inches left or two inches right of center. All right. Again, use your uh, screen tip that displays as you're dragging the, the guide and also the ruler to guide it into place. Okay. So we've got it right there. And so the intersection of those two is now right here. All right. The two guides. And what it wants us to do is drag this right trapezoid shape so that the bottom left hand corner of it is right at the cor uh, the intersection of those two smart guides. Okay, so we've got that position correctly. And again, use the pictures in your book as also a guide to make sure that you're getting the shapes in the right position. Okay, all right, on the bottom of page 2-41, it wants us to uh, learn how to distribute the shapes. So we're going to select the left trapezoid shape, the oval, and the right trapezoid shape. So when you want to select multiple shapes, just uh, select one of the shapes and then hold down the shift key as you select the remaining shapes. Okay, And then you have the three shapes selected. And what it wants us to do is... Display, display the Drawing Tools Format tab, which we're already on. Actually, no, we, we need to click on it. Drawing Tools Format tab. All right. And then we're going to click the Align button, which is over here in the Arrange group on the right side of the Format uh, tab 
pane. Alright, so we're going to click on Align. And then on the Align menu, we're going to click Align to Slide, which is down towards the bottom. Okay, and then and then what that will do is if you had any um, discrepancies in the space between the shapes, um, you know, if you didn't get your shape right positioned exactly where it should be, then it will um, go ahead and fix that for you a little bit by distributing distributing the uh, distance between the shapes evenly. All right, then it wants us to click the align button again and click distribute horizontally. All right, distribute horizontally. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, increase the space between the shapes uh, to kind of uh, align the shapes um, evenly with the width of the slot. All right. And once we've got that done, then on the bottom of page 2-42, it wants us to align a shape. Uh, then on page 2-43, the specific instructions there are with the three shapes still selected. And the Drawing Tools Format tab displaying, it wants us to click the Align button again. And it wants us... It, We've already aligned horizontally, and now what it wants us to do is align vertically by clicking on the align middle uh, button on the align tab or on the align menu. Okay, and that way it'll move the shapes up so that they're centered uh, vertically on the page on the on the slide. Okay, so we've got that on page the bottom of page two dash forty three. It wants us to position the arrow shape. So we've got uh, the trapezoid shapes and the oval shape positioned where we want them. Our next step is to position the arrow shape. All right, so we're going to click the arrow shape. All right, and we're going to drag the horizontal smart guide three inches above center. All right, so right now it's down here on the bottom. All right, so we're going to have to drag it up so it's three inches above center. And again, use your ruler uh, and use the screen tip that, that, that displays as you drag the smart guide. And then the vertical smart guide needs to be positioned 6.66 inches left of center. All right, and right now it's over here. So we need to drag it all the way over basically to the left edge of the slot, okay? So it's basically the intersection of those two smart guides is right up here, all right? And so what we're going to do is we're now going to select the arrow shape and drag it upward so that its upper left corner touches the intersection of the vertical and horizontal guides. So we're going to drag this arrow shape up Here we got it selected first. All right, and we're going to drag it up, um, and we want the top of the shape, the very top of the shape, to be aligned with that uh, horizontal smart guide, and then the left side of the arrow shape needs to be aligned at the left edge of the slide there. So just like that right there. Okay, and when you release the mouse button, you can kind of look at the, uh, not just the arrow shape itself, but the selection rectangle around it, and just make sure that the upper left-hand corner of the uh, selection rectangle is aligned where those two smart guides intersect, which should be right up here, okay? The, le the left edge of the slide uh, and the three-inch mark uh, vertically on the slide right up here okay all right so just make sure you have it positioned correctly and you can kind of look at the picture in the book to make sure that you have it aligned correctly and then on page 2-44 it wants us to flip the shape because right now it's pointing down we want it to actually point up all right so with the arrow still selected we're going to click the rotate button 
over in the arrange group of the drawing tools format tab all right and we're gonna click the flip vertical option on the rotate menu so flip vertical all right so that it now points upward instead of downward all right um, on the bottom of page 2-44 and continues on to page 2-45, it talks about changing the stacking order of the objects on a slide. Uh, like, for example, bring forward and send backward and bring to front. When you have shapes on a slide where uh, one shape overlaps another uh, shape, um, you have to decide whether you, which shape you want to be on the outside and what shape you want to be on the inside basically or basically forward or backward and so what we're going to do in our case on page 2-45 we want to make sure the arrow shape still selected we're going to make sure the drawing tools format tab is displayed and we're going to click the send backward arrow so right here send backward arrow and on the menu we're going to click on send to back and what that's going to do is that's going to move the arrow shape behind the other shapes on the slide all right because we want the arrow shape kind of behind those other shapes those other shapes have text on them and so obviously we want those to display without uh, uh, shapes covering the text on the shapes all right, so we wanted uh, we brought the arrow shape behind the other shapes. All right, uh, then on the bottom of page two forty five, it talks about grouping objects, and one reason that you would group objects is so that uh, later on when you want to do some formatting to all the objects at one time, or you want to move all the objects at, at, in unison at one time, uh, you can do that by um, having all the shapes grouped together. So what we're going to do is display the home tab and we're going to click the select button which is in the editing group on the far right of the home tab and then on the select menu we're going to click the select all button and what that's going to do is that's going to select all of the objects on the slide okay so it selects all four shapes on the slide and then what we're going to do is click the drawing tools format tab up on the ribbon and we're going to click the group button which is right here in the arrange uh, group we're going to click on group the group button and then on the menu we're going to click on the group command all right and what that does is that makes all of those shapes now one grouped object all right so we've got all those combined all right so now on the bottom of page 2-46 it wants us to insert some additional shapes uh, to the bottom of the slide so uh, with the drawing tools format tab displaying we're going to click the shapes more button now I noticed in the book it uses the name symbol more button uh, that's a, a error in the book it's a typo it should be shapes more button okay because what we're inserting is a shape and not a symbol all right so um, with the drawing tools format tab displaying we're going to click the shapes more button which is right over here and on the shapes gallery we're going to insert the following shapes first we're going to insert a moon shape which is the tenth shape in the third basic shapes row all right it's this one right here it's the little crescent moon shape we're going to click on that and then click on the bottom left hand corner of the slide all right and then we're going to insert the flow chart punch tape banner shape which is the fourth shape in the second flow chart area row so we're going to click on the shapes more button again go down to uh, the flow the flow chart uh, group of the gallery and the one that we want is the fourth shape in the second row which is this one right here it's called flow chart punch tape again use your screen tip to make sure that you're clicking uh, the right shape 
okay so click on that one and then click the middle bottom of the slide all right and we'll size these and position them in just a minute all right so just get them close to where they need to be and then we'll position them uh, more appropriately later all right then the last shape that we want to insert is the sun shape which is the ninth ninth shape in the third basic shapes row so we're going to click back up here on the uh, shapes more button and under basic shapes we're going to find this sun shape which is on the third row right there okay we're going to click on the sun shape and then click the bottom right corner of the slide all right once we've got that done and you might uh, we're going to move these a little bit more later but you might get them at least to kind of move the shapes a little bit closer to where they should be and just kind of move them just a little bit kind of get them a little bit closer to where they're going to be uh, in their final positioning okay all right and then once we've got that done it wants us to select the three new shapes select the three new shapes so we're going to use the shift click technique so we're going to select one of the shapes and then hold down the shift key while we're clicking the other two shapes so we have all three shapes selected and then we're going to go to the shape styles button the uh, more button there and it'll open up the gallery of various uh, shape styles that we can choose from and it wants us to apply the light one outline green colored field green accent to shape which is this third style in the third theme style row so under theme styles we're going to go to the third row and the third one in that row is light one outline colored field green accent two. so we're going to click on that and it applies that style to all three shapes since we had all three of them selected all right then on page 2-47 at the top it wants us to resize the moon shape to 1.5 by 0.8 inches all right so we're going to click the moon shape you may have to click on an empty area of the slide first since we had all three uh, shapes selected and then click back up on the moon shape to select just the moon shape all right then we're going to go up to the height box and type in 1.5 then press tab type in 0.8 and then press enter and it resizes that moon shape to those dimensions then we're going to click the sun shape and resize it to 1.5 by 1.5 and then we're going to size the banner shape to 1.5 1.5 by 6.5 all right all right and then we want to align the banner so that it is at the left so the left edge is three inches left of center and the lower edge is 3.5 inches below center okay so we're gonna let's see three inches below center the left edge is three inches below center which would be oh wait three inches left of center okay three inches left of center and then three and a half inches below center at the bottom okay so be right right there okay and if you have to um, if, you, if you if you if you find that it's difficult to just use the ruler uh, to position the the shape you can always use the uh, you know drag the smart guides uh, in the corner where you want the uh, the picture to be aligned for example we could have drugged this um, 
we could have drugged the uh, the vertical smart guide over to this three inch mark here and then we could have drugged the horizontal smart guide down here to three and a half inches and basically what you want is the corner of the the bottom left corner of the banner shape to be aligned um, where those two uh, smart guides intersect right here okay so it looks like I have mine positioned where I need it and so then what I'm gonna do is let's see it wants us to align select the moon shape um, select the moon shape and click the bring forward button alright because right now it's hidden behind the banner so we need to click the moon shape and click on bring forward alright and then click the bring forward command and it will now uh, display over the banner shape alright then we want to reposition the moon above the banner. Well, yeah, the the uh, bring forward will reposition it above the banner or in front of the banner, and then it wants us to align the moon so that the right edge is two inches left of center. Right edge is two inches left of center, which would be right there. Okay. And you can kind of look at the picture there on page 2-47 in your book as you're aligning these shapes and at least kind of get them very, very close by just kind of looking at uh, the book. But also use your guides. It makes it a lot easier uh, when you use your guides and your grid lines. All right, so we've got that. And then it wants us to align the sun so that the sun shape so that the left edge is two inches right of center all right so the left edge should be two inches left of center and again kind of use your and also the bottom should be aligned at the three and a half inch mark below center so about right there all right and again you can kind of look at the picture in your book to kind of get it um, aligned correctly all right so we've got those three shapes aligned now what it wants us to do on the bottom of page 2-47 it wants us to select all three of these shapes at the bottom of the slide so we're gonna we've already got the Sun shape selected so we're gonna hold down the shift key as we click the banner shape and then also the moon shape so that now we have all three shapes selected and what we're gonna do is merge the shapes together all right so on page 2-48 step 2 uh, we're going to on the drawing tools format tab we're going to click the merge shapes button which is over here on the left hand side merge shapes and then on the menu that displays we're going to click on combine on the combine command and that will just combine all those shapes uh, and make basically one shape out of those three original shapes all right and then what we're going to do is type in uh, the shape text that it shows on step four so we're going to type in a smart thermostat and then press the enter key to insert another paragraph and then on the second paragraph we're going to type in works night and day and then we're going to drag through that text in the shape and change the font size to 24 all right so you'll have to go to your home tab or you could have used the mini toolbar either way you want to do it but you're going to change the font size of that text to 24 point all right and then once you're done with that just click on an empty area of the slide to deselect everything and then you're going to hide the grid and the guides and the ruler alright so you're gonna to go to the view tab and just like we 
uh, click the checkbox earlier to show these uh, various uh, the ruler and the guide, grid lines and the guides. Now we're going to deselect each one of those to remove the check and basically hide uh, those elements on the slide. Okay. All right. On page 2-49, it wants us to apply a picture fill uh, to a shape. So what, what it wants us to do basically is move to slide 4 and insert the shape called star seven point shape all right so we're going to go to the home tab and in the drawing group we're going to click the shapes more button and uh, the shape that we want is in the banners row it's under stars and banners and it's the sixth shape in the first row so it's this one right here, star seven points. All right, it's just a star that's got seven points on it. All right, and then once we've clicked that, we're going to go up here and click on the slide where we want that shape to be inserted, which is about right there. All right, kind of in the um, kind of upper right-hand side of the slide there. And then we're going to proportionally resize the star shape to three inches by three inches. So we're going to need to uh, make sure that the star shape selected. Go up to the Drawing Tools Format tab up on the ribbon. Uh, click on the height box and type in three. And then press tab and then type in three as the width. And press enter. And it will resize the shape for you. And then with the Drawing Tools Format tab displaying, we're going to click the Shape Fill arrow. So shape fill up here, and that'll open up the shape fill uh, gallery. And then in that gallery, it wants us to, what we're actually going to do is insert a picture in the shape. So we're going to go down to picture on the bottom of that uh, menu, and we're going to click on from file, or from a file. And then we're going to navigate to wherever we saved the data files for this assignment okay and all of the data files that you need in other words all the pictures are available under the resources heading on the assignment page in Miles Arca alright and I've got mine saved in a special folder here so I'm going to navigate to that folder and that's what you'll need to do wherever you save the data files for this assignment uh, that's where you're going to need to navigate to okay I'm going to need to navigate to the folder where they're saved alright and so I'm going to find, all right, and there are two picture files for this assignment. The one that we need in this case is the one that's called support PPT2 bulb. All right, so it's the picture of the bulb there. We're going to click on that, click insert, and it'll insert it inside the shape, and it'll uh, resize it to fit neatly within the shape. All right. And then on the bottom of page 2-50, it wants us to, with the uh, star shape still selected, we're going to click the shape outline arrow. So over here, shape outline. And we're going to point to weight at the bottom of that menu. And we're going to change the weight to 6 point. Okay, we're going to change the weight to 6 point. All right. And just kind of check it and make sure it should be a much thicker outline around the shape now all right and then on the bottom of page 2-51 it wants us to change the shape outline color so with the uh, star shape still selected we're going to click the shape outline arrow we're going to change the shape outline color to green under standard colors right there and then we're going to on the top of page 2-52, we're going to change the shape outline style. So with the shape still selected, we're going to click the shape outline button arrow to open up the gallery. And then we're going to point to the dashes. Um, command at the bottom of the menu there and it'll open up another menu of various dashes uh, styles that we can apply and we want to apply the second one in the list which is round dot 
All right, round dot style outline. All right, so we've got that applied. Now what we want to do on the bottom of page 2-52, we need to click the shape effects button. All right, and again, make sure that the star shape is still selected. We're going to go to the shape effects button and we're going to add a glow effect. So we're going to point to glow and then it points you to the right one there at the in the picture on the bottom of page 2-52. It's the very last uh, glow effect in the second column. All right, last row, second column. It's called glow 18 point green accent color 2. So you're going to click on that glow effect and just check it and make sure it looks correct. All right, then on page 2-53, uh, with the star shape still selected, we're going to click the rotate uh, button. So we're going to go up here and click on rotate in the arrange group. And that will open up the rotate menu. On the menu, we're going to click on more rotate options because we want to rotate it a, a, a specific amount. All right, we're going to rotate it a negative 15 degrees. So we're going to go over here to on the rot on the format picture uh, task pane uh, under in the rotation box here. We're going to click the down arrow until negative 15 degrees displays. You could also just type in negative 15. You can do it either way, but make sure that negative 15 degrees displays in the rotation box, and then click the close button for the format picture task pane. All right, and then once we've done that, on page two, top of page 2-54, uh, we need to add the title for this slide. So where it says click to add title in the title placeholder, we're going to click there and type in what's shown um, on step one on the top of page 2-54. So we're going to type in manage your energy as the title. All right. And then on page 2-54 under to add and format a shape, we need to move to slide 1. We're going to insert the rectangle top corner snipped shape. Alright, so we're going to go to the shapes more button on the home tab. And it's the fourth shape in the rectangles area. So we're going to go down to rectangles, and it's the fourth one. It's called rectangle top corner snipped. So we're going to click on that, and then kind of click on the middle right-hand side of the slide to insert that shape in the, in the approximate position. We'll get it in the exact position in a minute. All right. Then it wants us to size that shape to 2.2 by 2.2 inches. So we're going to make sure the shape is selected. Go to the Drawing Tools Format tab. Go up to the Height box in the Size group. Type in 2.2 and then press Tab and type in 2.2 and then press Enter. And it'll resize the shape for us. All right, then we want to fill the rectangle's uh, shape uh, with the picture uh, called Support PPT2 House. All right, and that was that other picture that we saw uh, uh, of the, the two data files uh, that we had for this particular assignment. So what we're going to do is make sure that the shape is selected. We're going to go to the Shape Fill button. We're going to go down to Picture, just like uh, basically go through the same process that we used uh, to insert the picture uh, inside the shape on slide 4. Okay. And we're going to click on picture there. And we're going to rotate the rectangle left 90 degrees. Actually, let's go ahead and insert the picture first. We need to go to, from a file. And then we're going to insert the picture of the house there. All right, insert, and it just inserts it uh, into the shape. And then what we want to do is, with the rectangle shape selected, we're going to rotate the shape uh, left 90 degrees. So we're going to go up here to rotate, 
and rotate left 90 degrees and then we're going to flip the picture horizontal so we're going to go back up to rotate and click on flip horizontal all right so that the snipped off parts of the shape are on the right edge of the shape all right then we want to add a three-point outline to the rectangle so make sure the uh, rectangle shape still selected we're going to go up to the shape outline button click on it and change the outline style to square dot square dot which is that one right there okay so you're going to point to dashes and then click on square dot all right and it adds that and then it also wants us to uh, change the outline weight to three point. I'm kind of doing this a little bit out of order, but it's all right. I'm going to go back up to shape outline, change the weight to three point. Okay. And then we're going to add a uh, 11 point uh, glow, green accent to color glow. So we're going to make sure the shape is still selected. We're going to go to shape effects, point to glow. And we're going to add the, the glow effect called glow 11 point green accent color 2. So it's going to be this one right here. All right, so we're going to click on that. And then we're going to display the ruler, the grid lines, and the guides. And position the rectangle so that uh, the bottom right corner is at the intersection of 6 inches right of center and 3 inches below the center. All right, so we're going to need to go to the view tab and uh, display the ruler, the grid lines, and the guides just like we did before. And to help us get the picture in the right location, what we're going to need to do, and it doesn't say this specifically, but we kind of learned this process before when we uh, position the shapes on slide five. What we're going to need to do is move the vertical smart guide six inches right of center so right over here okay and then we're going to need to move the um, horizontal smart guide three inches below center which is right there all right where those two intersect is where we want the bottom right hand corner of the picture to be aligned or the not the picture the shape alright so we're going to drag this shape and kind of look at the smart guides that we position there and get the, the uh, shape aligned the bottom right hand corner should be aligned with where those two intersect alright so just get it in position there and kind of check the picture in your book to make sure you've got it positioned correctly all right now before we move on to the footer I'm going to go back to slide four and check something I forgot uh, to move the we're supposed to move the shape uh, into position so we're going to go back and do that okay um, on Back on page 2-49, um, and I forgot to do this initially, what it wants us to do after we resize the, the star shape on slide 4, it wanted us to use the smart guides to position the shape as shown in the picture there on page 2-49. So we need to go ahead and position that shape where it needs to be here. Kind of get it aligned. Um, you may want to look at the picture there on page 2-53 and kind of get a better idea after the formatting is done to the, to the shape, um, kind of where the positioning needs to be. So it looks like about right, about right there is where it needs to be. So the lower corner 
the lower edge needs to be aligned at the one inch below center and then align the right edge of the star shape with the right edge of the slide all right and that'll get it into position there all right so now let's go back to page 2-55 it wants us to add a footer uh, with some fixed information in it all right and so and actually before we do that let's go ahead and um, hide the ruler and the grid lines and the guides by clicking the check boxes for those all right and just make sure that a blank area of the slide um, you know just click on a blank area of the slide to deselect uh, the shape all right and then what we're going to do on page 2-55 we're going to click the insert tab up on the ribbon we're going to click on the header and footer button which is in the text group okay when the header and footer dialog box displays make sure the slide tab uh, is selected and then you're going to click on the date and time checkbox to uh, place a check in the box and you're going to on page 2-56 two, two we're going to click uh, the fixed option down here under date and time and type in in the fixed box you're going to type in October 1st okay so that the date will display as October 1st no matter what the actual date is alright and then we're gonna click the slide number checkbox to add the slide number to the slides and then we're gonna click the footer checkbox um, to add the footer and then we're going to click in the footer box and type in uh, what's shown on the fifth bulleted item on step 2 on page 2-56 so we're gonna type in greenest Street Corporation. All right, and then you're going to down here in the at the bottom of the header and footer dialog box where it says "Don't Show on Title Slide." You're going to click that check box to move the check check mark in the box because we do not want the header we do not want the footer to display on the title slide. All right. Then once you've done all that, you're going to click on the Apply to All button at the bottom of the header and footer dialog box. And you might uh, go ahead and click on each one of your slides and make sure that the, the footer displays. It should display on all of the slides except the title slide. In other words, except the first slide in the presentation. All right. On page 2-57, last thing we're going to do to this uh, presentation is we're going to add a transition effect. All right. So um, what we're going to do is click the transitions tab up on the ribbon. And we're going to point to the more button uh, for the uh, transitions gallery. Click on the more button to so open up the full gallery of transitions that we can apply. The transition that we want to apply to our presentation is called box and it is one of the last uh, transition effects under the exciting category. This one right here. All right, so we're going to click on box. It'll show a little preview of what that tra transition looks like. And then what we're going to do on page 2-58 is we're going to click the effect options button, which is right here. And we're going to choose from top as the uh, way that the transition effect is going to open on the slide. All right, and it'll show a little preview of that. And then we're going to click the duration uh, box up arrow until three seconds displays as the duration. Okay, and that way it'll just make the transition effect last a little bit longer between slides. And then we're going to click the preview button on the far left of the transitions tab sheet. And it'll show a little preview of what that, uh, those effect options and the transition effect itself, how it will look when we're actually presenting our slides. And then our last step and one of the most important steps is right now 
this transition effect is not applied to all of our slides. It's only applied to the first the, the slide that we have selected. And so what we're going to have to do to apply that transition effect to all five slides, we're going to have to click on the apply to all button. All right, so make sure that you click on the apply to all button once you've applied your transition effect and your duration and your effect options. You must click apply to all for it to apply to all of your slides. All right, so at this point, you'll need to go back and check all five slides, check uh, the text on each slide, check your formatting, uh, also check the smart art that we applied, that we added to slides two and three, make sure it's correct. Uh, check your shapes that we added to slides one, four, and five, and the pictures that we uh, inserted into some of those shapes. Just make sure that the formatting is correct, that the sizing is correct, uh, positioning is correct on all those, and you can use the examples in your book to check those. Once you've made sure they're all correct, um, then you can go ahead and upload them into Miles Arca. And I uh, just let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.